Welcome. Today we are going to talk about states of matter, which is a topic in chemistry um, that is usually taught in senior one. You heard someone say, what is the matter? That's not the one we are talking about. We are talking about matter, which is anything that occupies space and has weight. You can mention anything. You can come up with anything. Is it a bicycle, a stone, um, water, juice, your tongue, anything that occupies a, you know, a certain space and has any amount of weight, whether it's as light as a feather, as light as air, so long as it has weight and occupies space, that is matter and that is what we are going to be talking about today. So, matter. There are three major states of matter that we shall look at for now, for this class. We shall look at three states of matter where almost everything we look at falls. That is... So, by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to use the knowledge we have, we're going to look at, to classify whatever you can look at. And, uh, as either solid, liquid, or gas. Now, we are going to look at the characteristics of each of these states of matter. But before we go that far, let us look at the rule that guides us on determining, which we refer to as the kinetic theory of matter. The kinetic theory of matter, it, it is more like a, a rule mm, or an idea that has been accepted by scientists like me and you if you one day choose to be one. So, what does the kinetic theory of matter state? It assumes that particles are too small to be seen directly. And that all matter consists of these particles, which we shall call atoms. So, matter consists of particles and these particles are too small, implying that you can break it down until you come up with those particles that make, say, a stone. But definitely you cannot see them with your own eyes because they are too small. There are spaces between those particles, but the spaces differ from one set of matter to the other. And lastly, that the, the, it, this kinetic theory of matter, kinetic has something to do with movement, okay, as we are going to see how it applies, okay, but kinetic theory of matter also assumes that there is, there is some kind of movement in these particles, but it changes from one state of matter, it varies from one state of matter to another. So that is about the kinetic theory 
of matter. Now, we're going to be applying this to every state of matter so that the next time you see a substance, you can easily tell which state it is. And now, we're going to start looking at the different states of matter, starting with solids. In solids, we have still those particles, okay? But the particles are very close together. Actually, these particles are held together by forces that pull them together, okay? We have one particle and another, but they have a force between them that pulls them together, okay? And there are four, that's why they are tightly packed. So they have strong forces of attraction between themselves, the particles. Because of the strong forces of attraction, they are tightly packed in a regular pattern. And that accounts for the characteristics that we are going to give about solids. For example, they have a fixed volume. They cannot be compressed. and that they do not flow. Okay, by fixed volume, we mean that their volume never changes, okay? Um, I, I know that in primary you, dis you, you learned how to find volume of a substance, okay? That is their capacity uh, where it can be contained. Now, their volume never changes. If it's a stone, it cannot change one day to become smaller or bigger unless if it has been broken. They also have a fixed shape, meaning that their shape cannot change. For example, if I have my solid, which is this, okay, and I want to fit it in this container, which is this, it's going to take the exact shape. It's not going to change so that it fills up my container okay it's going to remain with its fixed shape this marker too is a solid the duster too so if i try to fit it in it will fit but its shape is not going to change how about, how about if i try to put it into a container that is smaller than itself okay its, its shape will not change because it's a solid and they cannot be compressed by compressed we mean that if say you have stones and maybe you're packing them in a tin or something once it is full you can't squeeze more stones into it okay because they can't compress they can't become smaller and lastly they do not flow so if i have maybe a lorry that is pouring bricks or stones they they tumble into each other they you know they they, they crash into each other they do not flow smoothly like a river or a drink okay because they are solids since they have a strict shape that does not change so that is all about solids. Now we go to another state of matter, which is liquids.